Hi, my name is Dana Roseman. I'm the Director of Technology and Applied Research for Integrated Diabetes Services. And we're doing a series of videos talking a little bit more about the DIY loop system and how to best op optimize your use of it and your blood sugar management. But before I dive in, I wanted just to remind everybody that this video is intended for education purposes only. And any on-label or off-label changes you make your diabetes um, management ought to be discussed with your prescribing provider. Um, but a lot of people have questions about how to best utilize the loop bolus calculator in terms of food absorption. And if you're someone who lives with a little bit slower gastric emptying so that your metabolism might be a little bit slower than it once was, or maybe you're now taking a medication that causes your stomach to actually empty a little bit slower. Uh, these are the medications called GLP-1 antagonists or a GIP-GLP-1 combination. And these medications are injectables, um, although there is an oral medication called Rubelsis that does um, also cause a slowing of, of your stomach. Um, but these medications will cause a slower absorption of food. And so you might notice um, that starting these medications or over time, you might have some complications with diabetes that your stomach is not emptying and your metabolism is not as fast as it used to be. Some symptoms that people describe when they have this is maybe your blood sugars aren't reacting to low blood sugar treatments as quickly. Maybe you notice that after you have a high fiber or high fat meal, you're having low blood sugar before your blood sugars actually start to trend higher. Loop is a fantastic system for really targeting this because you can delay a lot of your carb entries or you can even schedule delivery of carbohydrate boluses in the future. There's a blue calendar in your um, bolus calculator in Loop and this actually, if you click on it, you can schedule foods to be entered in the future. A lot of times people will notice that their blood sugars don't start to spike until two hours after they've been eating. And so we can really time the insulin a little bit better um, with this calendar and actually entering carbohydrates in the future. Um, but you don't always have to do that. You can split a bolus up, say some of the carbohydrates you're eating, you do think are, or you do know from previous experience, they're gonna be absorbed really quickly. Let's go ahead and cover those appropriately with the loop system. And then maybe some of the higher fiber carbohydrates, or perhaps um, if you're having a high fat meal, you'll know that we ought to delay some of the entries of those carbohydrates into your loop calculator. Another option is to use an override and to um, customize that override to start giving you extra insulin in the future as your blood sugars start to rise. We talked about this a little bit on a video I did for high fat meals, and it would be similar for someone who also has slower gastric emptying and they might need to um, help themselves out by giving insulin later, much um, several hours after they're finished eating. Um, but it's good to collect data on common meals and common foods that you eat and we can start to detect patterns um, that would be really helpful for you to then um, take advantage of some of the options on the loop system. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions, take a look at our website at integrateddiabetes.com. We have a type 1 university that dives into a couple of um, other, well, several other topics, um, specifically about do-it-yourself loop. And if you need individual consultations, our providers are available to help. Take care.